In the convergence of games, movies, anime, comics, and more, Transformers Prime stands as a multi-dimensional masterpiece that transcends boundaries and delves into the intricate realms of socio-political discourse. As a content creator learning to navigate these diverse domains, this animated opus is a fount of inspiration that I've talked about in the past, but in War and Peace, knowledge truly is power. Let's talk about the expansive landscape of Transformers Prime. Creators and animation. Steered by Dwayne Capizzi and Jeff Klein, Transformers Prime achieves its visual grandeur through the remarkable craftsmanship of Polygon Pictures. The synthesis of cutting-edge CGI and traditional animation forms a visual marvel that captivates both aesthetically and emotionally, making every frame a canvas for introspection. You probably recognize their work and don't even know it, from western shows like Tron Uprising and Star Wars The Clone Wars to anime like OG and Demi-Human, which I infamously love. They have quite the pedigree under their belt, and the expressive emotions and explosive battles make it impossible to bring up the characters without the ones that brought them to life. Part 2 Decepticons, Megatron Temptation of Dominance and Calculated Strategies Megatron, voiced by the legend Frank Welker, is an enigmatic Decepticon leader who personifies the allure of dominance and the calculated strategies for supremacy. His charismatic manipulation and intricate tactics inspire conversations on the intoxicating allure of power, the consequences of unchecked ambition, and the delicate balance between revolutionary leadership and and oppressive autocracy. He's a master manipulator as seen whenever he gaslights Optimus, whenever Prime believes he's still Orion Pax, whenever he takes Starscream to an Energon mine acting as if he was going to kill him to scare him into submission, whenever he uses gestures of grandeur to inspire loyalty and fear-mongering to enforce it. He's also seen caring to some regard, showing to have a rather toxic soft spot for Starscream whenever he chooses him over Dragon. Wing, and a connection to his undead army as he reaches out towards them at an exploding space bridge. Even how he fights side by side with Optimus Prime shows that the camaraderie they shared, the chemistry they had, isn't lost on him. He's an example of the righteous being corrupted by power, and that even the most noble of goals can be thwarted when selfishness becomes involved. He's also a standout amongst villains and a force to be reckoned with, given the fact that he will destroy anything in his path, blocking him from obtaining more power. A power-hungry tactician who isn't afraid to lob off a limb if it means obtaining an advantage is not the kind of guy you want to mess with. Starscream the fluctuating dance of ambition and allegiance. Voiced by Steve Bloom, Starscream's fickle allegiances and unrelenting pursuit of power capture the intricate dynamics of ambition and loyalty. His readiness to betray Autobots and Decepticons alike for personal gain sparks debates on opportunism, personal integrity, and the delicate equilibrium between self-interest and collective cohesion in a socio-political sphere. He's not only at odds with his own selfish ambition, but his loyalty as well. He seems to have an admiration for Megatron at the start of the series, attempting to save his life even if it costs him power only assuming command when all hope seems to be lost. As the series grows, however, he becomes a testament of how conditioning can affect a person. Megatron refusing to acknowledge or reward Screamer when he does good leads to them butting heads since why do good things if you're going to be punished either way. It's a good example for parents and teachers in any capacity to reflect on. He's a product of his environment who had the potential to be more of an asset than a hindrance. That being said, he's not blameless either. Being cunningly opportunistic as the series progresses, willing to stab anyone in the back, making him an example that victims can't be that way forever, and the moment they willingly harm others, they become perpetrators all on their own. This is best showcased by how he treats Predaking, resorting to physical punishment as Megatron has done to him, instead of rising above his environment to be the better person and learn from others' mistakes. Knockout and Breakdown 
redemption, loyalty, and unlikely alliances. The Decepticon duo, Knockout, voiced by Darren Norris, and Breakdown, voiced by Adam Baldwin, symbolize the narrative of redemption, loyalty, and unexpected alliances within the enemy ranks. Breakdown's tragic trajectory and Knockout's multifaceted persona creates conduits for exploring redemption, the potential of transformation, and the bonds formed in unanticipated circumstances. Breakdown is far more impulsive than the other cons around him. He uses his head second and his hammer first. That doesn't make him dumb though. He represents that strategic ingenuity doesn't make the best warriors, nor the best minds, as he is one of the more formidable Decepticons and one of the very first to see the errors of their ways. He's also one of the kindest, as seen whenever Fowler imitates a Viacon and Breakdown treats him as an equal in terms of respect, something that Decepticons rarely do throughout the series. Knockout balances Breakdown out by supposedly being the smarter of the two given he's the Decepticon medic and scientist until Shockwave's arrival. He's also able to see the error in the Decepticon ways, even joining the bots by the end, showing the redemption that Breakdown never got to see. He ends the story his partner set up, asking a what if that we never saw come into fruition. He also may be a perfectionist with OCD or an issue in regards to cleanliness. It's entirely up to your interpretation here, but he hates being dirty, scratched, scuffed, he likes his parts and his paint to be without spots and blemish, adding a complexity to his character that also adds layers of comedic timing as well, as long as it's not used against him maliciously, which it never seems to be. He's also very flamboyant, with some lines and some mannerisms up to interpretation. His sexuality is entirely up to how you view it, which not only respects the viewers by allowing how they see it to be based on their age, experiences, and preference, but it normalizes it by not making it a spectacle in any regard. He's his own character, not bogged down by labeling and being able to exist far beyond it. Soundwave, the silent sentinel and weight of surveillance. Soundwave's silent vigilance and mastery of espionage underscore the potential of nonverbal communication and the implications of perpetual surveillance. His enigmatic presence ignites discussions about privacy, the ethics of surveillance, and the interplay between silent observation and overt action, both within the series and our contemporary existence. It can be argued that he's a one-dimensional character, lacking depth and development, I will admit that he would have benefited from having more than just a laser beak carry over from his other incarnations, but he proves to be a formidable fighter. His surveillance makes him one step ahead of everyone, turning the tables on his comrades with the very things that they said. He is shown to care for laser beak, to be ready to take command almost as quick as dad blames Starscream, and have to be trapped in the shadow realm in order to lose a fight. His development was the same way he was, behind the scenes. Arachnid and Dreadwave the duality of ruthlessness and conviction. Arachnid and Dreadwing, although Decepticon antagonists, embody the duality of ruthlessness and conviction. Their differing allegiances and unswerving determination unfurl the diverse motivation that propel characters. They form a tableau for discussing conviction, morality, and the intricate lines that define personal allegiance. Arachnid putting herself first, sticking with the Decepticons only as it benefits it's her or her need for survival, sees her wanting power as much as Megatron but lacking his go-getter attitude, leading to her scavenging a plan from the wreckage of whatever is left. She uses and discards others on a whim and is loyal beyond belief if it was possible to serve yourself. Dreadwing, on the other hand, puts Megatron and the Decepticon cause above all else, with the only bond stronger being the one he lost with his twin brother, Skyquake. Dreadwing has convictions that even Autobots can see the merit of, and a strong sense of honor that Optimus even grows to respect. Dreadwing sees the honor that the Decepticons lack, but due to his fighting between his loyalty to Megatron and his love for his brother, he never gets the chance to be the change he wishes to see among the Decepticon ranks. He represents the idea that the enemies are still, for lack of a better term, people, still capable of their own thoughts and their own convictions. He's the side of war that you never want to think of, the humanization of enemies 
you may have to run alive one day, and a perfect example of two sides of the same coin. Even as an enemy, he's respectable, not because he could switch sides like Breakdown or Knockout, but because he has honor regardless of the side that he's on. Shockwave the facade of logic and ethical ambiguity. Shockwave's logical precision and relentless pursuit of scientific progress paint him as a morally enigmatic figure. His willingness to prioritize progress over ethical considerations beckons exploration of the moral consequences of scientific exploration. Shockwave's character serves as a gateway for reflections on scientific responsibility, the ethereal nuances of morality and technological quests, and the cost of favoring knowledge over empathy. He comes off cold, calculating yet loyal as well. The emphasis on his analytical nature could overlook the moral consequences of his scientific pursuits, making him seem reprehensible at times. But instead, they did establish some sense of a connection to the Predacons he was reviving to make them more than experiments and him more than the one conducting them. Speaking of experiments as well as connection, he is representative of the dangers of becoming a workaholic, especially when your work isolates you from others and detaches you from connecting with them. This is best shown by his rivalry and later Later partnership with Starscream. If it was Shockwave's choice, he'd have worked alone, thinked alone, and been alone. Starscream constantly butting into his business did humanize him a bit, with them escaping together and working together as well. Shockwave also shows fear at points, when his life was in danger, showing that there's more to him than meets the eye. Emotions under the surface, but right where the eye can see. Predaking intersection of identity and destiny. Predaking, the formidable Predacon, confronts the intersection of identity and destiny. His odyssey reflects the journey of individuals navigating societal confines to define themselves. Themes of self-discovery, predetermined destinies, and an equilibrium between heritage and forging an independent path resonate strongly within his arc. He also carries the hopes of his entire race, the weight of the life that they lost, as he spends the majority of his screen time believing he is the last of his kind. His struggle with survivor guilt, meshing with his alienation in the universe because of it, leaves him an angry, confused, and yet sympathetic character, manipulated by the only ones he believed he could trust. Once that trust is broken, he is left to truly find who he is, and carve a place for himself in history. His growth from being treated as a mindless tool which is reflective of slavery, to being being more powerful than those that treated him so poorly is a good example of rising from the ashes of your situation and making the best of an all-around bad one. It also shows that victims of abuse and manipulation shouldn't be looked at as lesser than or weak, because it takes strength to survive that situation and even more than to establish yourself far from it after. Unicron, the Cosmic Arbiter of Annihilation and Rebirth Unicron, the Cosmic Harbinger of destruction and renewal, emerges as a transcendental force within the Transformers universe. His presence props existential inquiries about cosmic balance, the inevitability of cycles, and the interplay between chaos and creation. Engaging with Unicron's presence invites discussions on the philosophical implications of cosmic forces, and the eternal struggle between order and entropy. That being said, the show's focus on his destructive nature, yet dwindling it down to a threat that a small united front can defeat, obscured a deeper exploration of his motivations, and given he's the Earth's core, the cosmic implications of his existence. Now these aren't part of the script, but I want to bring them up anyway. First up is Skyquake, Dreadwing's brother. He showed that the Autobots aren't the only ones capable of losing anything, and demonstrated the lengths that the Autobots are willing to go to in order to stop a Decepticon. His death also greatly impacted Dreadwing in the future, and showed that there are brotherly bonds between the Decepticons that go farther than the loyalty they have to Megatron. The Viacons did a good job representing the grunts that we don't really think about. We get to see them getting mindlessly killed by the heroes of the show, as if they don't really matter and don't have much life of their own. But we see multiple instances where they talk amongst one another, where they communicate where they have their own personalities, feelings, and we see even more instances of fear. The Viacons die 
pretty gruesome deaths getting dismembered, tortured, and blown to bits. And yet for some reason we never really consider them. That could be representative of the amount of soldiers that die within war, and how we dwindle those casualties down to statistics, to numbers, to casualty reports, and not down to the people that they actually are. The Insecticons, although forced into representing blind loyalty when under Arachnid's control, as well as the perils of such with how their fate ends, being forced into being food by Arachnid herself, they also represent individuality among grunts that appear to be the same, as seen with Hardshell who rose above his station and almost scrapped Bockhead, as well as the Insecticon that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Megatron and presented what appeared to be a challenge. That being shown also gives hope for the Viacons, which is actually one of the few things that is represented quite nicely in the sequel show Robots in Disguise from 2015. That show does a lot wrong, but it does have a few things that it does get right, and showing the Viacons in a similar light is one of them. I'm not sure how to talk about Predacons that show up in the series, so I'm gonna call it quits here. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Transformers Prime content from me, let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to share this to other people that may enjoy it. I'd greatly appreciate it. But above all else, I appreciate you for making it this far. For more news, reviews, Use and whatever we choose, stay tuned to Nerdsfeed. Have a great day. Thank you.